Kazuma Kuwabara. He's a weird character for me to make a video about. I didn't really want to rehash the narrative style I took with my Hiei or Kurama videos, but also didn't really have anything novel to say about him. There's a couple decent videos on YouTube that already sort of cover what I wanted to say. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I really did want to do something a little better for the character. So I waited and gave it some time. Actual months later and still nothing had come up, so I decided I'm going to go ahead and just make whatever I'm going to make. What's been interesting about making these videos is that I actually have to put words to things that I intuitively felt and picked up while watching Yu Yu Hakusho. Whether it be as a kid, one of the rewatches I've done growing older, or just refreshing myself with various clips while making videos on the series. I always just got it. Especially with a character like Uabara who wears his heart on his sleeve. When I see a meme of him or anything, it just automatically triggers my memories of him throughout the entire series. His goofy voice and face are sort of permanently ingrained into my mind. Kuwabara doing the light skin stare will probably be one of the thoughts in my head when I'm on my deathbed. Now how do I write all those feelings and memories into art? Kuwabara is the rival. He's like the Krillin to Yusuke's son Goku. Simple character in terms of design, he's sort of like if a bully character, not supposed to appear in a throwaway gag, stuck around as a main character. For over a hundred episodes, you see his uninspiring attire, and his goofy hair. You hear that raspy voice say, You're a meshi! Echoing throughout your brain. I honestly wouldn't have it any other way. Kuwabara is similar to Yusuke. They were both delinquent school children who had little in the way of life, though there was an underlying difference in that Kuwabara had this archaic chivalrous code. He wasn't haunted by the same phantoms that Yusuke was. Instead, he purposefully sought out fights, farming XP, and excelling in something he found to be an outlet. There was something noble and charming into what could have been a one-note character. That allowed him to be the exception to the rule. Him getting caught up with Yusuke was an interesting turn of events for his life. He finally found someone that truly challenged him in a realm that he hadn't had too much struggle in. Then just days later, his newfound rival passes away. Going nowhere in school and finally finding someone that he could be on equal footing with, though out of nowhere it was swiftly taken away. I think this is one of the more important moments in the series. When people think of Kuwabara, their image of him is static, albeit maybe with a caveat or two. He's sort of a standout amongst the four in the way people see him. Not that people don't shallowly engage with the characterization of Yusuke, but people are usually quick to retort misconceptions or just lazy engagement with him. Hell, even I have a video defending Yusuke in that regard. I also have videos on Hiei and Kurama, the very first videos on my channel actually. This sort of comes up from two different angles. One is that Hiei and Kurama have pretty straightforward stories, and while there is a lot more if you dig deeper, or use different lenses to analyze them, it's not really a requirement. You also see Yusuke's story unfold, most easily understood during the Dark Tournament arc, which also unsurprisingly happens to be the most popular as it fits nicely in one's head, even among a casual view. Kuwabara, on the other hand, seems to already have this personality that persists despite the odds that he faces. People sort of just put him into this, well, he never gives up and is often used for gags, box, and operate off that foundation and limit themselves to looking at his character in any other meaningful way. The second is that, People just don't remember right off the entire early part of the series, which is really confusing because it has some of the best character development for characters like Botan, Keiko, Yusuke, and of course the topic of this video, Kulvara. When you think of him, you may think of his fight against Elder Tigoro, or him diving into the demon realm in hopeless pursuit of Sensui, or his jokes and chemistry with characters like Hiei or Kurama. But early on, there are several episodes that just show him in a different way, shedding a bit more light on what is going on with his character. Let's rewind the clock all the way back to episode 3. This takes place during the Spirit Egg Saga, which you can see more of my thoughts on in my Boats On video. 
Photon and Yusuke in spirit form notice that Keiko is getting attacked before guess who? That's right, Kuwabara and his gang of friends arrive to interrupt them, breaking out into a large fight. The next day, Kuwabara ends up in the principal's office and he's the only one in trouble for allegedly starting the fight. The teacher accompanying Kim is Mr. Akashi, someone who hates Kuwabara with a passion and will go out of his way to mess with him even if it means flying. The warning that they're given boils down to saying, Okubo, Kuwabara's friend, will lose his job, which he does to support his poor family if they get into another fight. Following this, you see a meeting of the most unlikable teachers on earth conspiring with each other in order to set up a trap and cause Kuwabara and his friends to get in trouble and hopefully get them expelled, essentially trying to get rid of some of the more troublesome students that are still in school in way to raise the school's standing and hopefully by virtue of that their pockets. So another test is added on top of this, quite literally. Kuobara and his friends have to score at least a 50 on the test or Okubo will lose his job. So Kuobara sort of sets out on the studying venture as he only scored a 7 on the previous one, putting Kuobara in a unique challenge that you don't really see for the rest of the series. Throughout this, Yusuke is essentially giving divine intervention to help Kuobara out. He gets beat down and doesn't fly back. Proceeding to want to study, he can't due to how tired he is and falls asleep, only to have Yusuke pop in his dreams and inspire him to keep studying. In the end, he manages to pass the test thanks to the help of Yusuke and continuing despite getting beat down. Of course, the teacher lies, marking his grade down. This leads to one of the earliest moments in his character and while in my opinion justified, shows Kuwabara in a different light than you'd see him in later parts of the series. He is going to knock his teacher out, but Yusuke thankfully intervenes and manages to rescue him from his own anger. There's this sweet little moment where Kuwabara realizes that Yusuke, though somehow dead, managed to help him through this event and thanks him wherever he may be. Yusuke had a profound impact on Kuwabara and the character we see throughout even the Forsane Beast arc wasn't the same guy. It's not that he's the scourge of the earth or anything, but prior to us really getting to know him, he was definitely what most of us would consider a bad person. He actively seeks out fights and his honor code was a bit warped, and even if he was willing to take a beating for his friend, he was willing to throw away everything in an act of irrationality, something that would drastically worsen their situation and hurt not just him, but his sister who had abandoned her entire life in pursuit of helping Kuobara make something out of his. Yusuke's positive impact on him led him to run to Yusuke's house as it was on fire and heed the call of Botan. It also left him with his latent spiritual awareness. It dramatically altered the course of his life. Kuobara seeing Yusuke's journey unfold before him led him to seek out Genkai. Rather than being overwhelmed by his power or using it to achieve his own desires, he actively seeks out help rather than trying to face things on his own. Kuobara had a lot of positive influences in his life and the struggles he went through during the prior mentioned episode shifts his mind in a more open direction. Rather than being stubborn and attempting to deal with everything on his own through his sister, Takanaka and Yusuke, he's able to take a step back and realize that Genkai's advice could help. Through him stepping back and seeking out Genkai, and becoming attached to Yusuke, he learned how to handle and ultimately weaponize his powers, as well as becoming aware of demons. All those troubles he and his friends had faced were materialized in front of his very eyes. Him taking the step back allows him the opportunity to pursue fighting demons alongside Yusuke. This sort of begins the path of both the main two human characters that people familiarize themselves with. Things sort of autopilot from here until the boys' confrontation with Tagoro. This facilitates a lot of events in the story, obviously. You see Hiei's story begin to unfold, as well as Kuwabara be introduced to Yakina. It's been said before, but it is notable that the latter themes of bridging the human and demon world are shown through both Yusuke and Kuwabara. Obviously, Yusuke notably does this through his fights with the girl demon, Whereas Kuwabara does it through his attraction to Yukina, he doesn't really care that she is a demon and doesn't pop into his mind whatsoever. 
This also extends to his relations with Garama and Hie. Coming from hanging out with a bit of a motley crew and being introduced to the supernatural during the Genkai tournament, it is still notable how Kuwabar adapted to his surroundings. He arguably has more of an attachment to the human world, or at least the desire to actually live. Whereas Yusuke, when he died, needed an entire anime to convince himself that he was worthy of it. He had become more open-minded, and this accompanied by him willing to put himself out there and take a beating sort of shape him into a charismatic and courageous character. He allows his friends and their different viewpoints and techniques to influence his own, his powers developing in a much more in-the-moment way than his contemporaries. Kuobara's willingness to put himself out there is arguably a bigger strength than his propensity to get his ass kicked. In fencing, it is possible for a highly skilled opponent to lose to an unskilled one. Now 9 out of 10 times, they'll probably win, though there are people who are so unorthodox that it's impossible to counter or predict such an untrained movement. It'll either trigger that muscle memory or lead the skilled person to trick themselves up. Chess champion Magnus notably goes out of his way to open with unorthodox moves to make his opponent act outside the realm of books and pre-programmed optimal strategies. Anyway, following these events, Kulbar and Yusuke have different paths. Yusuke is still running from those existential demons and his initial fight against Agoro feels a little anti-climatic. He desires another case to keep himself occupied as it's all he really has. Kuwabara, on the other hand, has returned to normal life. His sister is still resuming to be a positive influence on his life as he heeds her advice this time and stays out of trouble. Rather than getting into fights and dealing with people he shouldn't waste his time on, Kuwabara is attempting to build his own life and adapt to the human world. He sort of evolved past the primitive urge to go out and bang heads with another punk, maybe outside of friendly scrap with Yusuke, whereas Yusuke is just waiting around for the next call to fight. Kuwabara is the man and is willing to give his life for his friends when he gets the call, but when he returns to the human world, he does the mundane that he needs to do and feels content with his life, even enjoying the little highlights like going to a concert or spending time with friends. This sort of comes full circle during the Dark Tournament arc, ironically. The Dark Tournament hits both his primitive urge to seek out a good fight, especially against an opponent he didn't really beat, alongside protecting his friends and the rest of the human world. As things play out, he loses fights and is constantly put in danger. Of course, this drains him physically and mentally, and even though he pulls through, the look on Yukina, his sisters, and his friends' faces are inescapable. He learns that what he had intuitively valued in his return to the human world, his life, really mattered the most to his comrades, as well as vice versa. This, of course, peaks around the most unlikable character in the series, Elder Tagoro, the pathetic epitome of everything Kuobara's character is against. I've talked about this before in my Dark Tournament and Elder Tagoro video, so I recommend going ahead and checking those out. Aside from that, something not a lot of people talk about is that younger Tagoro punches his brother into oblivion when he is turning into the worst version of himself we had seen yet. And younger Tagoro replicates that same punch around later in his fight against Yusuke on Yusuke's brother figure, Kuwabara. Though he opts not to harm him, and instead raises Yusuke to new heights. There's a lot of little stuff like that that's very interesting and plays into the different characters. Anyway, what is interesting to me is that after all of this, Kuvar just returns to being a normal dude. All this happens just in the first half of the series and doesn't include a number of moments, but I think it at least illustrates that there is more to Kuvar than just the surface level. This isn't even getting into some of the more interesting chemistry with Kurama, his struggles during the chapter Black Arc, or how he functions in the final arc after the events of Yu Yu Hakusho. So at some point in the future, I'll be making a part 2 to this, no idea when, but I'll try to get around to it soon.